What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 77, about how to get your shit together and keep your shit together even during the crisis pandemic that we're going through right now. We got the Facebook up here, the Instagrams down here, and a second screen for Facebook. So just make sure we're all connected. Volume check, and we are up. We are running. We are good. So if you have any questions, comments, put them down there below. Let's talk about it. Anything you want to talk about, anything you need to know about, let's talk about it. So we're talking about the secret to surviving this current quarantine situation. And Steve says, if you don't know, Steve says, most people will hate, but some can relate. Or you could even say, some people will hate, and most can relate to what we talk about. And Steve says, our approach to how we go about things here on Steve Says. This week's episode, a few questions I want to ask you. Are you still in your fucking pajamas? Are you? Have you adapted your daily routine to this new reality yet? Have you done it? And then also I want to ask you, how much has your life been affected by the lockdown, by the, the quarantine, and all this other stuff? How much has your life been affected? And are you prepared for the next crisis? So this is kind of some of the stuff we're going to talk about, and I want to know and I want some feedback from you about how that's going for you. We'll get into that in greater detail in a second, but first I want to tell you about Steve Says, how we do things here, what it's all about. Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, your fitness, so that you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. This is what it's all about. We're focusing on MBB, mind, body, business. This is what we're thinking about. And in that order also, because until you have your mind right and take care of your body, everything else is irrelevant. Everything else is useless if you don't first do that stuff. This is about having a role model mindset, how to operate with discipline, energy, confidence, taking action, and being your freak self. This is exactly how we do things, and this is exactly how we're going to talk about these things today that I just mentioned about this quarantine, about how are you. So I want to, I want to ask you those questions again. Let's revisit that. Basically, we're going to talk about how to get your shit together during this situation, this crisis, this quarantine. So the three questions that I started with were, are you still in your fucking pajamas? Are you? Like, seriously. I know it's crazy to, that we have to even ask that and have a conversation about that, but are you in your pajamas right now? And then, have you adapted your daily routine to this new reality yet? And last question, kind of a two-part question, is how much has your life been affected and are you prepared for the next crisis coming up? That's, that's what I really want to know. So, let's, let's get rolling to this. Are you in your freaking pajamas? It's crazy. It's crazy that this is what we're talking about. It's freaking nuts. But it's 2.15 on the East Coast, 11.15 on the West Coast. I just finished doing a podcast from Singapore. So it's different times all around the world. And I guarantee you in all those different locations, someone is in their fucking pajamas. And, and, and you need to, like, other than that, I want to ask you, have you brushed your teeth today? Have you washed your face? Have you washed your nasty ass? Have you changed into regular clothes yet? Or are you just wearing some loose sweatpants and, and, and slippers and whatever else? And I don't ask this, I don't, I don't say these things to be a dick, I'm saying this stuff, as, asking you this stuff as a coach. Because that's my job as a coach, is to ask you those tough questions and, and as crazy as those questions sounds at this day and you know what we're going through, those are the tough questions. And that's my job as a coach, is to ask you those questions. To seriously ask you those questions. And it's not out of judgment. And it's because I know, listen, I know firsthand, I've been there, you're stuck at home, indefinitely you don't know when this shit's going to end and you, you just start getting lazy you start getting complacent you start slacking i know what it's like i've, I've been there I've, I've been seeing crazy and i mean interesting but but mind-blowing things on social media and posts and pictures and what else whatever else on social media about people who haven't showered in days or haven't even changed out of their pajamas all day and it's nighttime or they're wasting their time or they're just saying they're bored all the time because basically they didn't have a plan. They didn't have any structure. Or they're, they're just not getting the, the simple things done they need to get done. And they're stewing over the hard, tougher things to do. So basically getting nothing done. Maybe you're suffering from anxiety or more stress than usual because there's no more normalcy in your life. 
But it comes down to it, this is the new normal. We know that. This is our new normal. You might have no structure, no schedule, no strategy. Now, these are all things you need to start thinking about, being self-aware about. Is this you? I'm asking you this stuff as your coach, as a coach. Is this you? Is this how you're operating right now? These are the things you seriously need to like reflect on and be self-aware about, have self-reflection on. Are you doing these things? Answer those questions like seriously and honestly. And if you say yes to any of those things, there's really nothing wrong with that. Well, I mean, there is something wrong with it, but I get it. It happens. I understand. And I'm just trying to catch some of these comments here. Piss your pants challenge on TikTok. Holy shit. This is on Instagram. Been networking after the workout this morning. Yes. And Gunny from Texas just said there's a piss your pants. I don't even, I don't even know what that means on TikTok. I haven't gotten to the TikTok yet, and I'm kind of glad I haven't. I'm probably going to miss the boat on that, whatever. You have to get on that stuff nowadays. But a piss your pants channel. Like, this is crazy. This is kind of shit that's going on. So that's what I'm saying. It, I understand that you can be off regular routine for a little while, but it's not okay. It's not okay that, that two months into this, this is still going on, or you're still feeling this way, or you're still going to have your structure down, your schedule down. And since you're spending more time because of the, the pandemic and whatever else, you get used to just wearing those relaxing clothes, wearing your relaxing clothes. And I, I consider like when I talk about being a, a personal trainer for so many years now for over 20 years as a personal trainer, I always say it's one of the greatest jobs in the world. We get to go to work in our pajamas. But now, seriously, everyone's going to work in there. It's like funny. It came fucking full circle. Everyone goes to work in their pajamas now, except our pajamas were our workout clothes and, and workout sneakers whatever, you know what I mean? But now everyone's doing that stuff 24-7, showing up to work in their, in their fucking pajamas. So actually, it makes me feel qualified to talk about this because I've had that. That's been a, I've used that saying for now literally two decades that being a trainer is the greatest job in the world. Working in a gym is the greatest job in the world. You get to go to work in your pajamas. But, you know, it's, it's like freedom. It's, you get, I get to dress like this, going to, to the work and helping people and change lives and transforming lives. But when you're sitting at home, it is not okay. I know it feels liberating to just ditch those professional clothes and those high heels and all the getting the hair done and the makeup done and all that stuff. But I'm sure you can relate to this. If you can relate to this, give me a thumbs up. If you're watching live, give me a thumbs up. If you're watching this on a replay, just type in replay so I know when you put comments in, if you put comments, because I will go back and look at all of them if I miss any. So just put live in there if you're watching this live. And if you're watching this on the replay, just, just type in replay. But I'm sure you can relate to this. Like, we all slipped into that. We all slip into that stuff. It happens. I understand it. But I found over time and realized, even just thinking in my head, I used to think I'm going to work in pajamas. Like, literally, that's what I used to think. And I stopped thinking that way in my head about the training industry because I realized over time that it was having like a, a trickle down effect in all areas of my life and self care. Like, that, just that little tiny thing felt like a, a sign of weakness. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to go thinking I'm wearing my pajamas to work. I'm going to go thinking I'm, I'm dressing sharp. I'm going to put my two different color sneakers on, get some nice workout gear, not just some raggedy sweatpants and whatever else, because just the thought of me saying I'm going to work in my pajamas gives you that little, little, little setback. Little, it holds you back just that little fraction, and I wouldn't want that. We want to be high performers here. We want to be on the highest level possible. Yes, what's up? Instagram, checking in, thumbs ups on Instagram, on the Facebooks. So I found that over time that, that your, your self-care goes out the window and it starts from that first thing in the morning. Like two simple tricks today. And we're going to go into de- a little more detail, more serious stuff. But it's crazy that the two simple tricks are get out of your fucking pajamas and make your damn bed. Crazy, crazy concepts. It's fucking, it's like mind blowing that this is what personal development has come to after all this time, this is what it's evolved to. We're going to get into the, more of that later. But I know, I'm sure you could, you, you're, you're feeling what I'm saying, that you can relate to this. It's happened. You realize it ends up being noontime and you're still in your pajamas. You haven't gotten dressed or whatever else. That, that has a huge impact on your energy levels, your mindset, your positivity, and just your mood throughout the day. The way you attack your work throughout the day. It literally will slow you down by sitting around in your freaking pajamas all day. Now, I'm not saying you need to, to every day go all out like some of you women out there, and I've seen it, where you'll get dressed for like three, four hours to go do something for 30 minutes. It's crazy. I mean, I know you do what you got to do. You Whatever makes you feel good, all for it. 
whatever gives you that, makes you feel good about, about the situation, confidence, all that, I get it. I'm not saying you have to do all that, but why not once in a while do that? Why not do that once in a while at home? Shit. Why not get your shit together at home? What's different? What's different? So you could do that for other people, but you can't do it for yourself. Think about that. Like, think about that sentence right there. You'll go and do that shit for other people, but for yourself and your family, you'll just give them the worst. The slop, the slob, the moping, the depressed, the the, the bitching and moaning and complaining. That's what you'll do. You'll bring out the worst in you just because you're at home with your family, with your kids, instead of bringing out the best in you. But you'll bring out the best when you go meet with the friends to go to a bar or even go to work into the office. But then you'll come to work online and you'll bring out the worst in you. Use this time to bring out the fucking best in you. That's what you need to do. Bring out the fucking best in you. You'll be amazed, literally, just by getting up and sticking to that routine of putting on your regular fucking clothes, making your bed, how it's going to set the tone for your day. Those are two little small victories, two little boosts of confidence, two wins. Because at a time like this, all you need to be thinking about throughout your day is stacking little wins. That's it. That's it. That's how you fucking win. Think of a baseball game. Singles and doubles win the game. Sure, the home run is dramatic and the fans cheer for the home run. Those are the, 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 the big time, big name players. But singles and doubles win the game. The basics, the fundamentals win the game. And like we're talking about the simple, the basic stuff. Get up, brush your teeth, take a shower, get dressed, make your fucking bed. The basics, the simple shit. Like the stuff we learned when we were little kids, hopefully. Well, I didn't learn that when I was a little kid, but whatever. The stuff we should have learned when we were a little kid. And yes, I'm talking about doing this stuff even if you haven't worked out yet. Like, because I know that's what the mentality people get when they're at home. I know it because I've had clients come and tell me that. That that's why they're, because they didn't work out yet. So they're going to, they're going to slop around until workout time. And then they'll start taking care of themselves after that. Fuck that. Get up, get sharp, get your shit together, go work out, take a second shower if you have to. They call it a PT shower in the Marine Corps. Literally in the Marine Corps, after PT, they would just run all the showers, like two lanes of showers, and you would literally just run through it, all of pouring showers in a line and loop it around, and that was like your your second shower of the day, your PT shower, just to de-slime real quick and get back to it, get back to the work, get back to making shit happen. Time to go to work. Like, do what you got to do. Make it happen. It's, It's possible to do this stuff. You have the freaking time. So if you ever said you didn't have time to do this or that, you didn't have time to work out, you didn't have time to, to learn that new skill, to, to learn that new language. If you ever said before, you just don't have enough time. This right now is exposing you for a bullshit, exposing your bullshit, exposing you for a fraud. Like you've got the time now. So what's the excuse now? No excuses. You can always take that second quick shower if you need to. You can always work in, find the time to work out no matter what throughout your day. I know you can, and I'm sure you know you can as we're talking about this. We don't want to beat this, beat this up, but, but you could you take a quick warm shower. There's scientific studies that actually back it up that warm showers will help lower anxiety and encourage like confidence and feeling just well-being. But I don't want you to just take warm showers. I want you to take warm showers sometimes, but also once a day or at least for a few minutes, I want you to run ice cold water on yourself. The, the, the effects that that has also on you. Ice cold shower for just a couple of minutes. Start with 30 seconds. Go to a minute. Go to two minutes. I do, I do them sometimes up to five, 10 minutes. Just ice cold water pelting on you. First, it's just a mental challenge. It's a mental toughness challenge because it, it sucks and you never get used to it. It sucks every time. You just learn to embrace the sucks. Take, take warm showers. Take ice cold showers. Mix it up. Like crazy. That If I need to give you grooming advice, you're just fucked because I'm just, I'm just a, a nasty one. But whatever. That's besides the point. But... So I'm wondering, have you noticed a change in your morning routine, a change in your schedule and your structure since this whole sheltering in place crap? Have you noticed it? I'm sure you have. And, and, and put a thumbs up if you could relate to that. I'm sure you have. Are you wearing a completely different wardrobe now that you're just stuck at home? And I want to see, ask you, how has your mentality been dressing like that all day? And you can put the comments in there or you could just self-reflect in your head. How has your experience been like that with it? Because right now, right now, it's more important than ever to make sure 
that we are keeping our head in the freaking game and not letting ourselves slip up. This is not the time. Make no mistake about it. You, you might think, and I know a lot of people are thinking this way, that this is the time to just sit back and relax like it's just vacation time. Fuck that. This is the time to step up. This is the time to keep your head in the game more than ever, to do more than you've ever done. Because guess what? It's going to take 10 times more effort and 10 times the better attitude to get the same result that you used to get in the old way of doing things. Because this is the new reality. Think about that for a second. Whatever your effort was before, whatever your attitude was before, times like right now during craziness are going to take 10 times more effort and 10 times more attitude to get just the same result. Forget about improvement and getting better. Just to get the same result. That's what it's going to take. Now, what you really probably just need simply is discipline and structure. That, that usually will solve everything. Discipline and structure is fucking freedom. Discipline and structure is success. Discipline and structure is fucking victory. That's what it is. So you need to create structure in your day. You need to create, know exactly how your day is going to go. I'll just run through real quick. How does my day go? How do, how do I break down my day throughout the day? And you need to do this yourself too. And yours might be a little different and that's fine. But you need to, because if you don't have, if you're just scattering around all day, if you don't have a schedule, you're just like a, 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 a pole, you're just like a, a domino that's ready to get knocked over. You're like a pinball that's just going to get knocked over the board all day. That's all you are is a fucking pinball in your day. A pinball to the universe if you don't have a structure, discipline, scheduled day. You're just a fucking pinball. Because it's going to lead to, obviously, more stress, which you know is bad for your health. It's going to lead to poor sleep. It's going to lead to making worse health, healthy food choices, which you know is going to lead to getting more out of shape, having less energy, which then leads to less exercise, which leads to less activity, which leads to even worse sleep. And it's just like a tumbling cycle of just fucking chaos. It's like you're just putting chaos on top of chaos. It's like a chaos force multiplier. By not having some discipline and structure in your day, you need to have it. Now imagine the opposite of all that. The sense of freedom and control and peace of mind knowing that I have everything set for my day. Just imagine that. Knowing what time you're going to wake up. What exactly you're going to do at what time throughout the day. What exactly you're going to work on. When you're going to get this done. Exactly what time are you going to work out. What time are you going to hang out with your kids. What time are you going to eat? What time are you going to rest? What time are you going to stop and just... Take a break and read a book or go for a walk. And you schedule those four things in and then schedule everything else around that. Now imagine once you go and you're doing your work, you're going to have laser beam focus on your work because you already know that I either already did or scheduled the time with my kids. I scheduled my workout because otherwise you'll be doing your work. If you don't have that stuff scheduled and don't have it planned and structured out while you're doing work, you're going to be half-assing it, not paying attention. Because you're too, you're too much thinking in your head, oh, my kids are going to think I'm a loser. I'm going to become a fat ass because I'm not going to work out or whatever else. I, I keep missing my workouts. I'm so lazy. You're going to have this negative self-talk going on just from lack of discipline and structure. That's it. Just structure your fucking day. That's all it takes. And I know it's a crazy time. We've never encountered stuff like this before. And it's just totally new. No one has. This is, this is totally new. So how do you deal with this? Reorder your priorities. You have to. Maybe some things you were working on might need to be brushed off for a month or two. But you need to reorder your priorities for the next two to three months. You need to recalibrate your day, recalibrate your mind, recalibrate your priorities for the next two to three months. That's what you need to do. You need to put some projects on hold. Pause a couple of projects because you might need to re, you know, change some things around. That's fine. Now, when I said you need to take better care of yourself and have rest and work out and recovery and make that a a staple in your day, the fucking non-negotiables of your day, that does not mean lower productivity. That should lead to even higher productivity. Even though you're thinking, oh, I don't have time to go for a walk. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to do journaling. I don't have time to read. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to go for a walk. If you make the time to do those, let's say two hours a day of self-care, two hours a day of self-care, all that stuff combined throughout the day. Those two hours that you're losing in your day, the other 13, 14, whatever amount of hours that you're awake, 15, 16 hours that you're awake, are going to be so much more efficient and productive and positive and motivating. So those 
few hours of self-care are going to be a force multiplier. In all that. Now let's even think on your day. Let's think. Let's say you did a two-hour workout. You did yoga for an hour. You, spent, you, you scheduled two hours for meals. An hour to play with your kids. An hour to go for a walk. An hour for a nap. All that I just said. Like think about if you have a day like that. That's a pretty relaxing day, right? That was only eight hours. You're awake 16 hours a day. You have another full eight hours to get shit done. So think about that. Like you really break it down and you start str- 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 scheduling and structuring your day like that and looking at it like that, with that from that perspective, like, holy shit, I have so much time in my hands. Listen to that stuff I just said. If you did each of those for an hour, which was a ridiculous amount of time, you would have so many hours in your day for other shit, for work, that you could just have laser beam focused and be totally fresh and recovered. But instead, you're just running around with a chicken with your head cut off, like that pinball getting knocked around and getting absolutely nothing done, not taking care of yourself, not getting healthier, Structure your day, discipline and structure. Stick to your training. This is what you train for. This is what you should be practicing for all the time. Don't get complacent. We know complacency kills. You can't just sit and wait and see how this thing plays out because it's not going to play out the way you like. And when you finally do get to go back to what you think is going to be normal, it's going to be a whole new normal. And I guarantee it's going to take you a while to then adjust to that. That's going to take a whole new level of change once you get back to the new like reopening of businesses in America and whatever else they want to call it. But the structure and discipline is going to give you certainty, it's going to give you safety, and it's going to give you order and control throughout this chaos. That's what it's going to do. So stop obsessing about how shitty things are. Being obsessed, oh my God, this sucks, like in a house and all this, obsessing on the negative. Take that same OCD, obsessive personality. We all have, we are all addicts in some way. We're all addicted to something. Take those addictions, take those obsessions, put them on your goals and your dreams and your ideal future. That's what you need to do. Not obsessing on the fucking news and the social media and the pricks out there that are gossiping and talking shit that don't, don't know. I put a picture the other day. I, I shared it. It was a great picture. It had three lines of people. One of them said the critic. One of them said the talker. And one of them said the doer. The critic had a long line wrapped around the earth. The talker had a line about half as long and the doer was empty. Fuck that. Fuck the critics. Fuck the talkers. Go and do it. Go and take fucking action while people are criticizing and talking when they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Crazy. Crazy the way it is out there. Especially now. People let go to default negative all the time during times like this. Screw that. Default positive. Default upside. That's the way you need to be thinking about this. Got the Instagram a little further away here. Trying to see some of these messages. Yes, start your day early in the morning. Just in case something comes up. Exactly. Get up a little earlier. Like people are using this time because they don't have to be into the office. They're like, oh, I don't have to commute now to work for that hour. I don't have to get dressed and do my, all my, get my hair and my nails did and all this other stuff. So I could sleep in an extra hour and a half. Fuck that. If you're used to get up at five, get up at 4.30. Get up even earlier than you used to get up so you can get more shit done. But you're also going to be prepared for whatever curveballs the day of working remotely or whatever. Maybe shit isn't going the way it's supposed to go and you need to deal with something else that wasn't even on your schedule because that's going to happen. I'll put stuff on my, I'll put slots on my schedule, schedule sometimes, open slots that are just for fucked up shit. Fucked up shit. That's what I literally will say on my schedule. Fucked up shit. Because something's going to get fucked up during the day and I'll have to find the time to deal with them. And I'll deal with them during my fucked up shit time slot. That's just the way it is. Plan for that stuff. Expect the best, but plan for the worst. Have a plan A, B, C, D, E, all the way to fucking Z. Plan for everything, but then go all in on plan A like there is no plan B. That's what you need to be thinking about your structure, your schedule, and your discipline. And, and all, the, all the while doing this, do not lose touch with your goals, your, your dreams, what you're working on. Don't think that stuff's not possible anymore. Like I've literally had people, coaching clients, tell me, That they pretty much have changed all their goals and all like everything, like thrown them out the window that they've had for years, their long-term goals, because they think it's not possible now just because of this. Fuck that. You cannot lose touch with that. Keep your eyes open. Keep looking forward. Keep marching fucking forward. That's the way you need to do it. And it starts with scheduling your day. It starts with taking time to structure and schedule your day, taking the time to do it. It's going to be worth it. And then hold yourself accountable to that schedule. Stay disciplined to that schedule. 
Hold yourself accountable to following it. Make sure you follow it and punish yourself if you don't. You don't get that free time if you didn't do this and that, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. And you'll be amazed just after a day or two of how much more relaxed and at peace you will have if you have a structured schedule. You put in your workout time, you put in your this time, your break time, your walk time, your reading time, your meditation time. You can do this up in 15 minute blocks, 30 minute blocks, 60 minute blocks. I usually do it in 30 minute blocks. It feels like 30 minute blocks works the best, but find out, figure out what works for you. But let me tell you, when it comes down to the strategy and the structure of how to survive this, it's stick to the basics, stick to the fundamentals. Basically, all the advice I've been giving like coaching clients and whoever else in seminars and workshops and, and podcasts and I have private one-on-one coaching clients I give this stuff to, the advice that we're giving them, they're, they're thinking they need some, something new, some brand new stuff to deal with these times. But you know what you need? is to go back to the basics, back to the fucking fundamentals that you should have been doing all along that you stopped doing. And you stopped doing them. And that's why when shit hit the fan and we got into a crisis, you lost your shit and you go sideways, you're sitting around in your pajamas with cheese doodle stains on your shirt watching freaking Netflix about some fucking big lion or some shit or whatever that, that thing people are watching. Think about that. If you just, all the advice, everything we're talking about here, think about it. We're going back to the fundamentals. In this, we're going back to the, the fundamentals of, of a kindergartner, back to way back, talking about get out of your pajamas, get dressed, make your bed. This is groundbreaking stuff here. It's, it's, it sounds funny, like I'm being sarcastic, but it's serious. You need to do it. You need to do it, but we're just going back to the basics, to the fundamentals, the things you should have been doing all along that would make it easier to deal with war. If you're training for war during peacetime, when war comes, you'll be as ready as possible. Now, you're never going to be ready for war. You'll never be completely ready for war. War is too chaotic. You'll never be ready. But you can be as ready as possible. As ready as possible when it comes to to working out or dealing with this whole crisis or whatever. Use this time as an excuse to be the best version of yourself, not the worst version of yourself. Because I'm telling you, this time is a fucking gift. Embrace that gift. Grab that fucking gift by the neck. This is your permission slip to, to sit home and focus on the shit that you've been wanting to focus on for the longest time. Like this is your, your, your hall pass, your permission slip from the universe. Say so you could sit home for a fucking month, for two months. Like, holy shit. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Whatever, whoever you want to thank for this gift of time. Embrace this freaking time. Because you, you could use this time now to discover where your weaknesses are. To get, gain more self-awareness and more self-reflection. To to see where are the gaps in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your leadership. Where are the gaps? And you're going to see this. You're going to see the holes. Where are the missing pieces? Now you have the time, the gift to work on this stuff, to develop the skills to to put those pieces together, to fill in those holes, fill in those gaps. Use this time to be a fucking role model. If you're not getting in the best shape of your life during this time, shame on you. If you're not putting systems and strategies into place, for your business, for your work, for your career, for your future, shame on you. You have more time than ever. You act like you have less time than ever. You have more time than ever. I don't care. You're doing homeschooling. I get it. We are also. You have more time on your hands than ever. Use the time to start meditating, to step up your exercise. Forget about doing less exercise. I've been doing more fucking exercise than just stuck at home. Meditation, exercise, diet, sleep. Someone used the acronym for that, and I never even heard that acronym before, and we preach about this stuff all the time. Take your meds. I forget who said it. He said, take your meds, medicate, med- not medication, meditation, exercise, diet, and sleep. Bam, right there. Take your meds. And right now, during this time, you have this time, embrace this. Overdose on your fucking meds. Overdose on your meditation. Overdose on your exercise. Overdose on your healthy diet. Not overdose on the shit cheese doodles. And overdose on your rest, recovery, sleep, maintenance. Self-care, the things you should be doing. Because listen, you're, you're, you need to do this stuff because you're never going to have all the answers. No one, no, one can deal, no one knows what it's like to deal with this stuff. No one knows what's coming next. But th- let me tell you something. You're uncertain about the future, right? The future is always uncertain. You're uncertain about what's going to happen next. Before, would you, you thought you were certain about what was going to happen next. You don't know what the fuck was going to happen next. Uncertainty never is always there. No matter how good you think times are, during peacetime, there's just as much uncertainty as during wartime. Because during peacetime, you don't know when fucking war is going to break out. 
So it's no different. If you just stick to those fundamentals, that's what you need to do. So how do you get on the other side of this victorious? By not being a little bitch, by not quitting, redirecting your energy, redirecting your emotions for good rather than evil. And, it, and, and once in your head you can accept that this is the reality, you're gonna, this, this will turn to a fun challenge for you. I mean, as much as possible. Obviously, I know there, there's people sick, there's people dying, and obviously we, it's horrible, but this is the reality we're in, and you need to deal with this the best way you can. Make this a challenge for you. I see this, what's going on right now is my fucking training ground. This is my arena, and I keep this right on my desk from the, the whatever it's called, the Coliseum. And I look at that all the time. Let me just show you that real quick, because this is just kind of sick, kind of crazy. If you look inside, there's blood all over the sands of the arena. I didn't put that there. It didn't come like that. These little free kids drew that in with their crayons. But anyway, that's besides the point. I look at that all the time, because whenever shit goes sideways, whenever shit gets hard, I just tell myself, this is just my training grounds. This is my training grounds. This is me fucking sharpening my sword. That's what this is. This is my training grounds in this war which seems insurmountable, seems impossible to get through. It's merely my training grounds to make me tougher, stronger, better for the next bigger, harder, tougher, stronger battle that's up ahead. That's what this is right now. And once you can realize that and, and reframe this shit in your head and maintain that perspective, maintain your character through all this, maintain your discipline through all this, once you can do that, yes, Ray Care. Ray Care, join Ray and I on May 14th Leadership in Crisis and Chaos, Thursday, May 14th at 10.15 Pacific Time, 1.15 p.m. Eastern Time. It's part two of a webinar masterclass series we're doing. Join us for that coming up May 14th. You'll be seeing information. I just posted about it earlier today. You'll, you can check all that. It's going to be freaking awesome. It's like what we're talking about here right now, but on steroids. How to really get through these times. That's what it's all about. So how do you get through this? Imagine, just imagine, if you can hold the fucking line. If you could hold the line, if you could tough it out just long enough, if you could outlast your enemies just long enough, hold on and don't quit until they quit. Run towards the gunfire while they run away from the gunfire. It makes you unfucking beatable. It makes you unbreakable. And it's going to make you, when the dust settles, be the last man standing. And all throughout the process, the people around you are going to look at you, your kids, your followers, whoever else are going to look at you and they're going to say, that is one cool, calm, in control motherfucker. That is someone I want to follow. That is someone I want to go to war with. That's what they're going to say. So this is your time to step up, to be the role model that you're supposed to be, that you're meant to be, that you're capable of being. So imagine if you could do that throughout this time and be that person throughout this time. The dust settles you will be the last man standing victorious. And it all starts with getting out of fucking bed, getting out of your fucking pajamas, make your damn bed, and wash your ass. Simple as that. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. I'll go in and check the messages right now. Let me know if you need anything. If you need any help with any of this, send me a DM. We could do, get on some one-on-one -on -one coaching, join our seminar, the Leadership in Crisis and Chaos, May 14th at 10.15 Pacific, 1.15 p.m. Eastern Time with my Navy SEAL partner, Ray Kerr and I. Come and join us for this Leadership in Crisis and Chaos Masterclass Series Part 2. Huge demand for it after the last one. Had over 250 registrants for it. So check that out. The link will be down below in the comments. I've also posted it over, all over social media. It's coming up in less than a week. So get registered for that. And I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.